In one of the previous videos we implemented a custom slider inside React. And this is how it looks like. We can jump between slides and we can use these dots on the bottom to change the slide. But a lot of people in the comments wrote that we are missing two key features from the slider. This is why we want to implement it in this video. And these features are first of all auto scroll of our slider. So if we are not doing anything, our slides must be changed automatically. And secondly, here must be a sliding animation between slides and not simply jumping and re rendering our slides. So let's look on the project that we built in the previous video. As you can see here, this is a parent. So this is our app.js, where inside we defined our array of slides. Every single slide has a URL and a title, and here we are specifying container styles. And this is important because our slider is completely fluid. We don't have fixed height and width there. And now here is our component image slider, where we are just throwing the array of slides that we want to render. And all other stuff is happening in this file image slider.js. As you can see here on the top, we have styles for our slider, separate slide, dots, and our arrows. And here is our component image slider. Most importantly is our state current index. This is our current index of the slide. And we have several functions like go to previous, go to next, go to slide, and we simply change here our current index. Also, as you can see in the markup, we are rendering just a single current slide, and then when we are jumping forward or backward, we simply re render a slide with the background. And here on the bottom, we are rendering our dots. Now let's implement our first feature and it will be auto sliding, which actually means if we are not doing anything, slider by itself simply jumps between the slides. But at the moment when we are clicking previous or next, or we are using dots here, then auto sliding feature must restart again. Because we don't want to see the behavior that we are clicking on the next slide, and then just in the millisecond afterwards, we are jumping to the next slide because of auto sliding. And actually, if we are talking just about playing JavaScript without React, this feature is super easy. You simply define set interval, and then inside this interval, every single time, you are just changing the slide. But it won't work like this inside React, because we have React hooks. And if we are talking about set interval, then we must store the ID of our interval, then we must clear it at some point, and this is not easy. And actually here we can't really use set interval efficiently, because we want to abort this interval every single time when user uses arrows. This is why actually the solution here will be set timeout. And just to remind you, the difference between set timeout and set interval is that set timeout simply does something once after defined amount of time. Set interval triggers something again and again. So what do we want to do? First of all, we must store somehow the ID of our set timeout so we can clear it later. And inside our React components, we are using useRef hook if we need something mutable to be stored between our re renders. This is why here let's define our timer reference, and here we can use useRef hook, and by default here we can just provide a null, because by default we don't have any timer. After this we want to create a use effect, and this is mandatory because set timeout or set interval are side effects, and we can't write them just directly inside our component. Now we want to create a set timeout inside and store our ID. For this we can write here timer reference dot current and this is how we're storing this mutable ID and here we can assign our set timeout function and inside this function we can simply call our function go to next and we already defined it in the previous video it simply jumps to the next slide and we want to call this set timeout just after two seconds. But it is not all, I want to write here console log use effect, just so we see when it happens. Let's check in browser. As you can see, we are getting here use effect, then here we are getting use effect again and again and again every two seconds, which actually means in our case set timeout is working like set interval. Why it is happening? Because every single time when we are causing the re-render of our component, our use effect is called again. And after two seconds, we are calling go to next. And as you can see here on the top, go to next function sets the state. And setting the local state inside React component causes the re render of this component. 
which actually means we are rendering this component, we are rendering our new slide, and after this use effect is triggered again, after 2 seconds. And this is exactly what we are doing here, we are jumping to the next slide after 2 seconds. As you can see here, this is exactly how it works, this is how we implemented auto sliding. But this is not all, at some point we want to clear this set timeout before it was done. When it is? When for example we are jumping with the arrows to the previous or next. And actually this is just changing of our state. So we don't want to write our logic inside go to slide, go to next, go to previous. We simply know every single re-render means we changed our state and here we want to reset our set timeout. Which actually means here we can just write if we have timer reference dot current which means we have an ID, then we want to clear it. This is why here, clear timeout and we are providing inside timer reference dot current. Let's check how it changes our behavior. If I will click now on error right, as you can see our set timeout does not work at all, because with every single click we are jumping again to our use effect and this set timeout is starting again. But now I am not doing anything and after 2 seconds we are getting this auto slide. And because we don't need any memory leaks, we also must clean the set timeout after we destroyed our component. This is why here inside our use effect we can return a function. And this function must just clear our timeout. So here we can simply write clear timeout and here we have timerref.current. In this case we are totally fine because if this component will be destroyed, we are destroying this set timeout also. But we are still missing something. If I will try here to write the array of dependencies, you can see the error of React hooks that we forgot to add the missing dependency, go to next and we must include it here, because this function is exactly the dependency inside our use effect. This is why here we are writing go to next and we are not getting an error here. But now if we will scroll on the top, you can see the warning. And we are getting here the warning from React hooks that go to next function makes dependencies of use effect and it changes every single render. And it doesn't make any sense because it will just do it in the loop. This is why here we must wrap our go to next function with use callback. And we are writing here that we have a use callback function and here inside we simply provide our go to next function. And as you can see here we still get a warning, because use callback function does not do anything without the array of dependencies. This is why here we must define the dependencies of our use callback function. And as you can see what we are using inside this function is property current index, but also our slides. And actually if you don't know what you are using, you can simply see it in the warning. These are our dependencies current index and slides length. This is why here we can simply write current index, comma, slides. And in this case we are totally fine and we don't have any warnings from React. Another feature that we want to implement is sliding between our slides inside our component. And the main problem is that we simply render our image and we don't have the animation. And we can't implement animation if we didn't render all our slides beforehand. Which actually means we must render all our slides here, just in the row, and we must have enormously big container, and then we simply translate the position of our slider. And the first thing that I want to do to implement this, I want to define inside our component what is the width of the parent. Because actually this is something that is better to get from the parent, like a props, and not calculate it on the fly from the DOM. This is why here I want to define for example not width but parent width and let's define it like 500. Now here inside our image slider we know that inside our component we are not getting on the slides but also parent width. Now as I already said we must render here not just one slide with background and this is exactly what we did, we must render an array of them. This is why here I will completely remove this slide styles width background and here I want to create a new div and this will be our container. And inside this container I want to render all slides, this is why we are simply mapping through our slides and we are getting access to every single slide, we are not interested in them and here we have our slide index. And here we want to render one more div, 
with our content of background. So first of all here we are providing a key because we are inside map and here we can just write slide index and additionally we must provide style and we want to use here slide styles with background and actually here to generate our styles we must provide a slide index. This is why here we need a function. So let's name it for example get slide styles with background and here inside we are providing slide index. So actually this is exactly the function like we previously had, just a const. But now we can change it in the function and we know that here we are getting just a single parameter, this is slide index. And this function must return back an object. And what we are merging here is first of all slide styles, this is what we had previously. Here background image is totally fine, but not like this. We want to get here not slides current index, but slides slide index. Dot URL is totally fine. And the last thing that we want to set here is width. And in our case here we want to use a property parent width that we got from outside. And we need to write here pixels. Which actually means this function generates styles for every single slide and we are rendering all the slides in the map on the screen. But as you can see in browser we don't have any images here now. Why is that happening? Actually if we will check our styles we can see that here we have a height from our parent. Now inside the first container has also height 100% and we can see it on the screen. Now here we have our images inside but the container of these images does not have any height. And actually here we can set our height for 100% and as you can see on the screen our images are rendered. Yes sure they are not rendered in the row but this is totally fine. What we want to do now here we want to create styles for our container of our slides. As you can see here we have this slides, this is just an array and here we have a div without any styles. But here we must create a function because we want to define not only styles but also inject widths inside. This is why here let's create a function get slides container styles with widths. And we don't need to provide anything here. Now here on the top let's create this function. So here we will have a function without any arguments and it must return us styles. But we must first of all define these styles. So here on the top, outside of our slider, I want to create slides container styles. And here first of all we must use display flags because we want to make them in the row. After this we must set height for 100%, this is important. And the last one here is transition, this is exactly animation that we want to add. So here transition, for example transform is out. For example 0.3 seconds. Now we can take these styles and just use them inside our function. So here we want to merge first of all all our styles that we just created, but also we want to add here width. So here width will be our parent width, this is exactly what we are getting from the outside, but we must multiply it for the amount of our slides, so here will be slides length. And additionally here we must set a transform because we must move our container. This is why here let's write transform and here it must be an escape string. So here we want translate x round brackets and inside here we have our property. And here we will have minus and then multiplication. So we will use here our current index multiply on parent width, which actually means we are moving here our container. And at the end we must have here pixels. Let's check how it works. I will reload our page and as you can see it actually works and it is moving already. What does it mean? Here we have our container with display flags, this is why there in the row we set here height, width and you can already see here transform because exactly this transform that we are changing is based on our current index and this is what is moving our slider. And the last piece of logic that we are missing here is overflow because we should not see the slides on the left and on the right. This is why here we can create new container around our slides container. And let's name it for example slides container overflow styles. And inside we can define overflow hidden and also hide 100%. Now here I will just take the styles and put them around our container. So here we have get slides container and around we want just a div with style that we just created. So now all our code is wrapped with additional div. Let's check how it looks like. 
As you can see now, we just see our current slide, but here on the right and on the left, we have overflow. This is why we don't see them. But as you can see, our transition between slides is not there, which means we wrote something wrong. And I already can see here, I wrote the word transition not correctly. Let's check again. I will reload the page. And as you can see, now we have a nice transition between our slides. And even if we are just clicking by ourselves, it is nice transitioned. And actually, if you are interested to know how to build a custom table with filtering and sorting inside React, make sure to check this video also.